and our Lord will help us in this struggle. He knows what we are suffering. Clearly, God is omniscient. Clearly, everything that happens in this world has been foreknown and foreordained by God in His divine decree. There are no mistakes. There are no accidents. There are no surprises. There are no hypotheticals. But even more than this, more, that is, for the encouragement of us mere mortals who are experiencing life one day at a time under the pressures of this life amid the shot and the shell of the invisible conflict now raging around us, our Lord Jesus Christ actually experienced exactly what we are having to go through, only to a degree we cannot really imagine this side of heaven home and without sin, meaning that as a genuine human being he had it much worse than we do, and yet out of his great love for us, he endured it all without every faltering, flagging of failing in order that we might be saved and have eternal life. Jesus Christ came into this world as a true human being in order to sacrifice himself for our sins. That was the only way in which we could be saved from the lake of fire and eternal condemnation. He took on true humanity, being, after the virgin birth, a genuine human being in every way that we are save only that he was born without a sin nature, an absolute necessity for us to be saved since he had to be the perfect sacrifice, a lamb without spot or blemish, First Peter 1.19, to be acceptable as our sin-bearer. None of us could go a day without sinning, at least in our hearts. Jesus had to live his entire life without ever sinning a single time, or we were doomed and damned. Therefore, he not only knows what it means to be a human being, since he is one, he knows far better than we what it takes to negotiate this life and push through opposition and hardships without giving in or giving up, because he did so perfectly. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering. Like a person people hide their faces from, he was despised, and we did not hold him of any account. For he bore our sicknesses, and he carried our weaknesses. And yet we considered him as the one who had been punished, smitten, and afflicted by God. But in fact, he was made subject to torment on account of our transgressions, and he was crushed because of our collective guilt, literally, guilts. The punishment required for making peace with God on our behalf fell upon him. Because of his wounding, we have been healed. Isaiah 53, 3-5 through five. But now we do see Jesus crowned with glory and honor on account of the death he suffered, even him who became a little lower than the angels for a brief span, so that by the grace of God he might taste death on behalf of us all. For it was fitting for the Father to make complete through sufferings him on whose account all things exist, and through whom all things exist, namely, the captain of their salvation, even him who has led many sons to glory, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 2, 9 and 10 For because he has suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested, since he himself was also put to the test. Hebrews 2, 18 Jesus, our high priest, who in the days of his fleshly life, that is, while he was on earth prior to the resurrection, having offered up prayers and petitions with powerful shouting and with tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and having been hearkened to on account of his devoutness, although being God's one and only, nevertheless came to understand firsthand from what he suffered what obedience to God truly is, that is, what it takes for a human being to be obedient to God. And once he was perfected, that is, perfectly completed his course, became the source of eternal salvation for all who are obedient to him, that is, believers. Hebrews 5, 7-9 For it is to this sharing in the sufferings of Christ that you have been called. For Christ also died on your behalf, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, nor was any guile found in his mouth. He did not return slander when he was slandered, did not threaten when he suffered, but entrusted himself to the one who judges righteously. 1 Peter 2.21-23 And as one who drank to the full the cup of bitterness which is human life, our Lord Jesus Christ is able like no one else to be sympathetic to the pressures we believers are under 
and to whatever persecution or ostracism we may be suffering. He knows by his own genuine human experience all of the pressures and temptations that lie at the heart of every spiritual failure. For he felt all of these himself, only without ever succumbing to any of them. Nor was the mandate our Lord had to fulfill in his humanity only one of resistance to sin. He was not absolved of any of necessary responsibilities which fall to the lot of all human beings. Our Lord was a son, a sibling, a citizen, and he had to be perfect in all of these respects, fulfilling with exactness the duties pertaining thereto, while at the same time preparing spiritually for the ministry of ministries, the gauntlet of gauntlets, and the crucible of the cross thereafter. Our Lord was virgin-born, born without a sin nature, it is true. But this did not diminish the burden placed upon his shoulders, as our context affirms. He too was put to the test in all things just as we are, only without sin. Hebrews 4.15 So in addition to the sins we commit daily, while we also often failed in many ways in our secular responsibilities as children growing, and also thereafter when we went out into the world, our Lord had no such luxury on either score. He had to be perfect in everything he thought and said and did, not only in refraining from sin, but also in perfectly carrying out whatever responsibilities and needful tasks it was incumbent upon him to do as the genuine human being he was, and all at the same time as he was also charged to grow up and prepare spiritually in a perfect way and to a perfect degree. And the child grew up and was being strengthened by being filled up with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2.40 We have discussed this subject in detail before, and readers are highly encouraged to review it. Suffice it to say here that instead of having things somewhat easier because he was and is the Son of God, as the Son of Man, the one sent into this world to die to save mankind from our sins, no one ever had it tougher than Jesus Christ. There is in fact no true comparison because no one else in the history of the world had to be perfect in all things. First, Peter 1.19, and no one else ever faced the level of satanic opposition our Saviour faced, for example, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, Mark 1, 12 and 13, and Luke 4, 1 through 13. If anyone can appreciate what it is like to face suffering and pressure in this world, it is our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord, that is, the Messiah, been revealed? For he grew up before him like a suckling plant, like a root springing up from dry ground. He had no particular handsomeness that we should take note of him, no obvious charisma that we should be taken with him. On the contrary, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering. Like a person people hide their faces from, he was despised, and we did not hold him of any account. Isaiah 53, 1-3 For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 Although he was born Saviour of the world, Son of God, King of kings and Lord of lords, Luke 2, 10 and 11, Jesus came into this world in a humble way and lived a humble life without the glory that was due him by virtue of who he was. He was born a king, John eighteen thirty seven, but he lived as a servant. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. John 13.13-16 13, 13 Our Lord knows what it is to live in this world. And he knows what it takes to live a godly life, to push through the resistance thrown at us by the evil one, his minions seen and unseen, and his evil world system. Jesus knows because he did it himself, facing opposition beyond anything we could ever take, beyond anything we could ever even imagine. He did this for us in order to be our perfect sacrifice and take away all of our sins by dying for them in the darkness on the cross. That was the only way we could be saved. 
If we ever have any question about the great love of God for us, all we need do is think on the cross. John 15, 13, Ephesians 2, 4 through 10, and 1 John 3, 1. For our Lord suffered all that he suffered throughout his life, and to the end of it not merely to endure, but to save us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 2.